and you're listening to a Token Nerd Network podcast. Three, two, one... Where we ramble on about geeky things, things ranging from Batman to pop figures to Star Wars, from Token Nerd Podcast, stay spicy my friends. Hey everybody, welcome to the Token Nerd Podcast, we ramble on about geeky things ranging from Batman to pop figures to Star Wars, I'm Anthony Pettiford. And I'm Madison Lee. All right, we're back with episode 42, um, and this isn't going to be like our normal episodes where we talk about the big uh, geek facts and geek news going on in the world, but instead we're going to focus in on the Oscars. Now, Addison, you host the podcast, The Real Film Geeks on the Token Nerd Network. I do. And uh, you host that with Zebedee sometimes when he's available. Yes. Um, and so ultimately you guys will end up talking about the Oscars and all the nominations that have gone out before the actual big night. Yeah, I'm hoping to catch more Oscar nominees before we film, but if we don't, we'll still have a lot to talk about. Okay. Um, but I want to focus in on the uh, recent announcement that... <laughs> okay. So what we're going to focus in on is Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad is officially now an Oscar-nominated film. Now, it's not for Best Picture. It's not for Best Director, Best Lead Actor, Best Lead Actress. I would just lead, you know, list everything. It's not for anything except for Best Makeup and Hairstyling. Now, I've seen a lot of people who've gone crazy about the fact that, okay, so Suicide Squad just got a Oscar nom for writing Damaged on a dude's head. And uh, I heard someone else, I think it was on Double Toast, and they said, yeah, and they had a girl roll around in a garbage bin wearing a bra, and that was her costume, Harley Quinn, because her only costume was that it was dirty. And um, so before we go into like the pros of it, let's, let's just dance around the cons. When they first announced the Suicide Squad and they showed the first picture of them all lined up, I, I think I was talking to you and I said, it just looks dirty. Like, it's all random. Like, their costumes didn't look good. Well, the Suicide Squad is random. They're not... No, I get the fact that they're random. It's... They just didn't look good. Like, their costumes just look dirty. Like, it just looks... Like, someone had gone to Goodwill and had given them... What was that? Goodwill. Except dirty. Well, or, also you also got to think about it. When... At the beginning of the movie, when they all come together, all their clothes were just in a bag. Mm-hmm. So I doubt they were probably clean. They were just held in a in a storage unit. So I doubt they. I I doubt that Amanda Waller would care. No, I get that. To get For the sake cleaned. of the story, I'm just mean like to present. Like in comparison to what the Batman suit looked like, it just didn't seem like it fit in the same world. When we have. You know, Marvel movies where the villains have their costumes and they're all a little bit more sophisticated. Well, let's look at the Marvel villains. Mickey Rourke's character was pretty dirty. Okay, Um, I can't argue that. Most of Iron Man's villains are rich people, so they're always going to dress nice. Uh, Captain America's first villain, the Red Skull, was a... The looks high... good. Look better. Yeah, he was a higher up in the Nazi army. Of okay, course, that, he's gonna look right, good. We're gonna. These right. are these are the, the Suicide Squad aren't like the the greatest villains of all time right, in DC. I'm not talking. Okay, step away from the story for a second. Okay. Okay. We are just talking about how they look when you saw them the first time, and you're like, oh, this isn't special. Like they didn't stand out to me. Compare, okay, let's compare them to villains that are on the CW shows. Okay. The CW shows that looked a little bit better. I mean, they looked like um, Heat Wave, and Heat Wave just wears a jacket. You know, a welding jacket, for the most part. Yeah. They all looked like that. At least Captain Cold kind of had some that made him look... I mean, Captain Boomerang just wore, you know, what was it? Some kind of... It was a... Um, I want to say it was like a adidas jacket but it was a um like a football team yeah football team jacket 
Um, but so a lot of people are going off, and me, me included. I don't think this was something that should have gotten a nomination. Um, it's one of three actually. So a man called Ove, which I didn't, I've never even heard of before. Nope. Um, and Star Trek Beyond, which will most likely win the. Yeah, Oscar. I think easily we can say right now that Star Trek Beyond. I mean, the characters looked cool. I mean, I think it was a shame that we covered up Idris Alba. Yeah. But the man looked interesting, cool look. Uh, in just comparison, um, the only thing about Suicide Squad that I can think of that people hated the evil putty looking monster, but I thought they looked interesting. Yeah. Um, but I would that fall under visual effects versus makeup? Well. Uh, for the most part, yeah, they are visual effects, but they a lot of them were, uh, what's it called, practical effects. Maybe some of the lighting and stuff was visual, but most of it was just them wearing, wearing a uh, weird, uh, rock costumes or something. I don't know. I haven't really looked too deep into it. Okay. Um. See the the thing that bugs me is that. Uh, um, laptop trouble. There we go. Um, I would say that Killer Croc was what would have gotten the whole. I mean, he. I thought he looked like crap in the original photo, but when you see him, he looks cool. Like they, mm-hmm. they did a decent job. You know, not CGing him for the most part, and actually putting the man in makeup, and you know, m- you know, he looked like a what we think a crocodile man <laughs> would look like. Yeah. Um. So I think that that's the reason they got it. Um, and this is just in comparison to Deadpool, which is the anti-hero that was put on screen from not so much Marvel, but the Marvel comics hero. But a lot of Deadpool's makeup was just... The, I'm not just saying for yeah. makeup. I'm saying for anything. Well, well let's, let's look at it this way. Okay. Some of the... What Deadpool would have been nominated for most likely probably would have been script. But at the same time, to if you look at what is nominated now, you'd have to take something off. Which let's the nominees for best because it would be adapted since it's based off off a comic. We have Arrival, Fences, Hidden Figures, Lion, and Moonlight. Mm-hmm. I can't really think of any of those films I would take off for Deadpool, unfortunately. Because if you really think Fair about enough. it, I'm not saying that he should be on there. I'm just saying you know in comparison now. But we also will have uh, Doctor Strange, which was a nom for Best Visual Effects. Yes. But <laughs> we can say that Suicide Squad is an, <laughs> an Oscar-nominated film. <laughs> and Free Six Mafia is also an Oscar-winning group. Oh. Uh, Does, I mean, they won for a song in Hustle and Flow in like 2004. Mm-hmm. Eminem is an Oscar winner. Okay, that, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just got, saying you gotta look one at, you gotta look at the category. One of the most controversial comic book movies that came out. I'm not saying controversial is like it came out and not a lot of people liked it. I mean, it was a split down the middle. There are very few people who are like, I kind of did, kind of didn't. Either they really liked it or they hated it. Yeah, but the, but hair and makeup doesn't really it doesn't take. It's fact, a it's a no it nomination. It it doesn't factor into story though. No, I know. I'm just saying. It just is interesting that. At the end of the day, this is going to be mentioned at the Oscars. Yes. Okay. That's all I'm getting at. Yeah. All I'm getting at. Okay. Um. And so I realized that this Fifty Shades of Grey was mentioned at the Oscars when their song got nominated. Okay, but that was not. That's a song. This is just makeup. But the makeup is in the movie. The song is in the movie. Okay. Yes, but they're. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. But it's not that the song. Could have been played on the radio. Okay? Okay. It's a completely separate medium. Song is, the song was made for the movie. <sighs> I've, I've never been so frustrated. Okay. So, we're going to skip the rest of this and we're just going to talk about, since it's been five months since the movie came out. Okay. I have to find it in my pencil eventually. Um, where did you sit when you saw the movie in the theaters? Like what score would you have given it? Can you just think of what you what score would I what I out of give five it? out of five out of five I would probably give it a three a three when you left yes so if you and have you watched it since no okay 
I have. Okay. Um, and when I left, I gave it a pretty high score. I think when me and Travis reviewed it, I gave it a four and a half or three and a half or four. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that I watched it a second time, see, it was one of those movies where when I left the theater, I liked it more and more. But now that I watched it a second time, I gave it a two. Okay. And I gave it a two. A two should have been borderline a one and a half to two. Now, the Deadshot stuff I thought was really cool. Um, Deadshot still carried the movie form where I thought, okay, he makes sense to be here. Um, I still love the effect with June Moon when she had her hand on the table and the Enchantress hand came out by the shadow and flipped over. Love that. Mm -hmm. But And also uh, Cinema Sins kind of ruined it for me where it was like, why was June Moon in the t- like belunking and you know looking for us by herself? Right. Um, why I don't know. And then Viola Davis. Love Viola Davis. I think she's an incredible actress and, and an incredible thespian. Uh, especially with the work of defenses and getting away with murder. How to get away with murder. But her Amanda Walrus was not I didn't like it because I didn't feel like this was just based on the character of Amanda Waller, it just didn't fit. And I don't blame her. I blame the way the movie, the, the writing of the movie and how it was set up. Like, she murdered people. And I'm thinking of it based off of the animated series where she was, you know, what can I do to make sure that America and the human race stay on top? All right. And I just didn't get that feeling. I, it, it felt way too political. Like, she was, she was afraid and had to cover herself and you know, make sure she didn't get into it. Because at the end of the movie, she did that whole thing with Bruce Wayne where she said, here's some files so that I don't get in trouble or that doesn't come back to me. Uh, I didn't like Margot Robbie. Okay. I, you know, after watching it, I thought, you know, she didn't belong here. Um, Joker, I hated it. Hated it, hated it, hated it. Um, and it's not because I'm a Joker fan and, you know, the Batman myth is something I hold close to my heart because I hold the Harley Quinn I have tons of Harley Quinn figures upstairs which is weird to say but you know the her character just I mean I'm not saying Marco uh, Harley Quinn Harley Quinn had to be like a serious figure but just the way they they portrayed her is I never saw that really smart side like she is supposed to be smart and I never saw that pop up she just was too ditzy the entire movie um and then the whole Joker trying to get a hold of her, and 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 that that was weird. Um, I didn't really like that. And then the rest of the characters were kind of blah. Okay. Um, the only interesting thing was they they could have really focused on was it's like Killer Croc. They caught him escaping from Gotham. He was running from Batman, and I wish that was something that pointed out like like this giant monster was escaping from Gotham City because he didn't want to interact with a man just as a bat. Well, I think it's because that would have, if they did that, then that would have been too many connections to Batman. I think they wanted to kind of leave it just down to the two of him catching Harley Quinn and Deadshot. No, I get that. I'm just saying, and I, most of them were Batman rogues. Yeah. Um, But it was, there could have been really cool setups for them in the whole universe. Like Captain Boomerang was caught by the Flash, and it didn't take anything. It would more interesting if you saw him kind of give the Flash a run for his money. But Flash caught him in, like, a second. Well, at the same time, they they kind of mentioned that he had just come to America to... Because he was, you know, he pretty much did all his crime in Australia, and then he just came to the States. So that could have been, like, the first, maybe even second, like, run-in with the Flash. No, I, I get that. I, okay, you're defending story. I'm saying... No, no, you're, you're defending what could have happened in circumstances. I'm just saying... If I was making the movie and I'm introducing this character, and this is the first time we've had a good look at the Flash on screen, and the Bo- Captain Boomerang is a Flash villain, make it so that it seems like there's a reason he'd be a Flash villain. Okay. Because, you know, Flash villains are, the Flash is going to catch us, the best thing we can do is distract him while we get away. And I didn't see anything like that. It would happen too quick. Um, he is the Flash. I, I get that. I get that. Then they just showed me that there should not be a movie. Okay. That Flash shouldn't be a movie because it's like the the Flash movie will end up being an hour and a half of 
My name is Barry Allen. I'm really cool. I'm kind of geeky sometimes. I work in a lab. I'm a scientist. I'm a forensic scientist. My mom died. I'm kind of sad. I saw a yellow flash in my house the night my mother was murdered. That's the same kind of story they're going to go with. And then I have a big villain fight at the very end, and it's going to last two seconds. It takes me longer to lock the key of his jail cell than it was to beat him. Well, I mean, the Flash TV show is just him dealing with the stuff he did when he ran into the past. Yeah, but he then takes care of business. Like, he bought Plunger. I'm not saying... The and then Plunger he messes fight. up again, and then he has to deal with that the again. Plunger fight, for example, we're talking about the most current episode, it wasn't a lot, but it showed that there was a... He was a... He was an obstacle. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an obstacle. Okay, but we're not we're not saying that Captain Boomerang is the is the uh, main villain of the movie. I know I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm just saying for the sake of introducing a character, make it somebody who's worth like show me why Captain Boomerang would fit into this group. Well, okay. Well, by, I don't by, think any of them really fit into the okay, group. I, the Suicide Squad is no, a bunch of just a random people that Amanda Waller can control. Okay. Ah, oh, Addison, the idea I'm trying to get across to you is we are going to have a Suicide Squad movie. Yes. Okay. We are bringing together villains for an assignment. Yes. Okay. Then this was not planned out. Then this was Amanda Waller literally should have just gone to, for example, Green County Prison. Okay. You know, 15 minutes from here. Walked inside and said, I'm taking... You, 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 and you. And and then we're going to go on a mission. There are no special skills. Well, I mean, I mean, look at the comics. Again, there is no, the only real person that actually has some kind of purpose there is Deadshot because he's a sniper. Oh, but in the comics, you know, it, they, they show different reasons. They show their skills. They, they highlight why they're there. I'm not saying it's an Ocean Eleven where everyone has a specific skill that comes to accomplish the mission, but it shows something interesting. Like in this... We see Captain Boomerang throw three boomerangs, and then one that is not a boomerang. It's like a drone. Yeah. Okay, but I'm saying to introduce him. Okay. To introduce him. And not take too much time away. And not take too much time. Let me see him throw a boomerang at Flash, where Flash is like, whoa, that would have been close. Something like that. Instead, Flash just shows him and goes, honor among thieves, (laughs) and then catches him, and that's it. Okay. I'm just saying, introduce him in a a better way. Show me why Captain Boomerang would have been on this team. Like, why would I go, oh, he's just a run-of-the-mill person who uses boomerangs? Again, it's a team of people that they can pick. I get it. No, I get it. I'm saying for the sake of the movie, if you are going to write a... If you were... And you tell me you want to write scripts, right? Okay, yes. Would you have introduced a character? I would have done the Suicide Squad anyways. I don't think this was a... I get that you wouldn't have. I'm saying, if you were going to introduce a character, and that character had a background, right? We'll use the example Captain Boomerang. Well, here's the thing: everyone was already complaining how long it took to get to the to get to the rest of the movie. Everyone was complaining that oh no, every time we saw a character, they had their little uh, descriptions and bio. So you wanted so with all that you want. I'm not asking for a 15 minute fight scene. It could have been instead of him going honor among sleeves. He could have had a boomerang thrown at him. It could have been in the middle of him being caught by the Flash. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to see Boomerang and Flash. Like I wanted to, I wanted to see Captain Boomerang be something more than oh, he just got caught. He can get caught. He should get caught. But I want it to be something where oh, he is a, a a challenge for Flash, or at least a minor nuisance. This wasn't a nuisance. This was just when when you see a fuzz in front of the TV, and you just go and you blow it, and it's gone. It really didn't disrupt your view. That's why they're. That's why the rogues work together because all of them pretty much can't do anything against the Flash. Okay, that's why they know, all work together. You know, gosh, you're like a Trump supporter. I can't get through to you. All right, so we'll just skip that. <laughs> we skipped a lot of things. Um, so. Watching it plot wise, or what I thought this movie should have been, something that we've argued about character introduction, I thought that we would get more Joker like everyone else did. Mm-hmm. But I thought we were going to see a Joker post. Because I've, I've said this on the podcast before that this movie is a reaction movie. It's a reaction movie to Batman v Superman. 
I wanted to see the Joker, you know, for once be someone who's like, this Joker's in hiding. But he wasn't. He owned a club. Pretty much, right? I don't know if he owned... I don't I don't really remember. That... And poor Common was wasted. Yeah, he, he was like, what, the tattooed man? He, which I guess is a Green Lantern villain? I don't know. See, look, okay. I, I, I said this before on the last podcast I was on. Suicide Squad in overall was a misplaced movie. Mm-hmm. It was very misplaced. It should not. It shouldn't have followed Batman v Batman v Superman. It really the next film should have been Wonder Woman. Okay. And Suicide Squad should have been something way down, down the line because you're. Okay, so. You know how Marvel now, even though I hate talking, I hate talking about DC and Marvel at the same time. But, like, the one thing about that I think Marvel did right is that they introduced, they did all their weird characters, you know, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. They did that after they established their universe. DC, unfortunately, has not established their universe yet. Even though I, I liked Man of Steel, I had some issues with Batman v Superman, mm-hmm. and I did not really like Suicide Squad. I liked it enough that I gave it a passing grade, but that's just barely passing. Yeah. So, the um, Joker... I we didn't get enough of Joker for me to really have a a full on like I like I hate him or I hate him or like him. He was just more of it, it was just kind of weird. He was too random even though I know the Joker is just a is ran, a random force of nature. But I think maybe we we would have had a different view of him if we had the same amount of time we had with him than uh like we do with Heath Ledger's Joker. No, I I agree. I'm just saying that what I was wanting was to see a Joker who was living in a world where his greatest foe, who, you know, they chase each other, he gets locked up, who Joker is the is the answer to Batman. Mm-hmm. Like, Joker in Death of the Family says, you know, like, I'm, I'm your greatest strength. Like, I make you shine. Like, your Robins, your Batgirl, all of them, they make you weak. I make you stronger. I make you better. We make each other better. We challenge each other. This wasn't that, but that's that's more for a Batman movie to explore instead no, of a Suicide Squad. No, I know, squad. I know, but I thought that we would see, like, not a Joker in a club, but they'd be like, "Where's Joker? He's in hiding," because literally the guy who he was playing this cat and mouse with game in was killing people. This Batman literally killed somebody. He didn't kill anyone. He was branding people. Which Batman? Are we, wait, which? What time were you talking about that when he killed someone? Post that, uh, post Superman, when he when he was when the death count was really high. What are you talking about? Batman killed people in Batman v Superman. In the warehouse. In the warehouse, like he was, people were done for. People were hitting the ground. People in that car were killed. He, okay, this the Batman I'm I'm trying to bring up. And it, it, you're looking at me. No, no, no. You're you're, sa- you're saying he's killing people. I'm saying when did he kill people? And you're just saying in the movie. All right. In Batman v Superman. Yes. For example. Okay. Okay. And this is. I don't want to. I don't want to. You not miss this. He latched something with a cable to the Batmobile. Okay. You didn't say that. You just kept saying he killed people in the movie. He killed people and in the movie. And you're looking at me like when, when did he and do I'm this? Saying, I'm saying I'm saying what? There was point? a good 15 minute chase scene where I was like, that poor guy had to go home. Someone's gonna well, find here's the thing, though. of that body and be like, "Little girl, the Andrews of the Bat killed your daddy." Okay, the traffickers. I and I know that I know it's it's weird, but I mean, also let's not forget in Batman Begins, you know, the precious Nolan trilogy. Remember how many cars he ran over with the uh, with the uh, tumbler just to get to the Batcave to save his girlfriend? No, I Addison. No one said anything about listen, those cars. Listen, listen, no one. I don't hold the Nolan trilogy that high. Okay, you know that. So don't 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 attack me. I'm not a Nolan worshiper. I don't go to his altar. You don't know me like that. Everyone else does. That's why we yeah, got everyone that's else why, does. That's why we have dark superhero um dark DC okay. movies. Yes. But they make a point of not showing people in those cars. So they can go with the excuse just like they did at the end of uh Batman v Superman or not Batman v Superman. Uh the uh what's it called? Extended edition when they're like uh there's there's no one in the plaza. Right? Yeah, and that was in the that was in the regular that was in the um, theatrical no that was in the theatrical version too. 
Okay. She says, "Why did you, why did you bring him back to the island? Because no one was here." Mm-hmm. Um, and so you get the feeling that there's no one there. Okay. Okay. It's empty. The Batman, the the no one he's racing. It's at nighttime, and it looks like all the cars are off that he's running over. Okay. Okay. Um, at, grant, I think there are some police cars, but you see them being like, oh, like they're they're they do the animated series like grunt where like batman someone falls off a ledge and they go oh just, just to prove they're still just, alive yeah just to justify like yeah. hey they're not dead they're just <laughs> really messed up <laughs> but in this you see the people in the car you know those cars were filled with people grant they were bad guys all right but that's I'm, we're going on to a tangent i'm going on a tangent again what i just mean is this joker should be terrified that his in his arch enemy is killing people for less than what he does so he should be hiding out because this is when this is when Batman was like I I get that this takes place after um Robin Batman v Superman but yeah oh. but after after Batman v Superman so after he's come to terms with not being that monster anymore but there was a time like in the if you ever read the one shot comics where uh Firefly was like there uh Firefly was making a robbery and he said yeah the bat's not been the same when you see a man fly from the sky you 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 change and Batman became darker, colder, you know, cruel. Well, maybe well maybe let's look at it this way. So this is what the Joker's always since the Joker's always wanted Batman to kill. Maybe now he's just bored with Batman because now Batman has done what Joker's been trying to do for years in the comics, and so now he's just no. I get that. I'm just saying, for him to be alive it would be not to run to Batman. So I was looking for a Joker that was in hiding. Mm-hmm. And is now maybe coming back like is a big comeback for Joker because he's like, oh, it's safe again. I can come back to Gotham or I can be, you know, active in the public eye again. But no, this Joker was at clubs. Like, well, unfortunately, it, it we don't like it's hard to find him. We don't really know where because we we got that from um, Harley Quinn's origin. We don't really know when that took place. We know when Amanda Waller put the team together, but we don't really know when um, when Joe when Harley Quinn was essentially born you know what i mean yeah but um but the scene that we saw when she got punched underwater yes was when she got taken into prison right when she was caught but at the same time we don't know if batman v superman happened while she was in prison like maybe that was maybe she got caught and then the events happened like a a week later it is more fair enough and that's why there and that's why um sorry i have a headache uh that's why I feel like Suicide Squad was just a really misplaced movie because it has so much Batman in it that we don't – and they don't really explain was bat was this – you know, we know the events of Suicide Squad happens post-Batman v. Superman, but all this, like, catching of, you know, catching Deadshot, catching Harley Quinn, you know, all these other characters, where – when did this happen? Yeah. Because of a lo- apparently long enough for – the guards to get to know Floyd and Harley, Harleen enough that, you know, so mm-hmm. I imagine there was some time. No, And I, also the letters that Deadshot got, she said like what? They, she, I think she was either every day or every week. That was a lot of letters. the fact that he carried those with him on the mission. I don't, look, like I said, the movie has a lot of issues. Honestly, I would have really mixed up the team. I probably wouldn't have had some of them. Like, so here's my question. Sure. If you had a Suicide Squad of five people, what would your five be? Well, the way I would make my my team. Yeah. In the in the, this is strictly for movie, not in in general, but for the movie verse, where I would have placed Suicide Squad was after Justice League, and it would have and I would have seen, had a vision of, um, instead of like what would what would we do if Har- um Superman was doing whatever, my vi- uh, my. Amanda Waller would talk about what would we do if we can't control the Justice League. So I would have Deadshot to kind mm-hmm. of compo- um, to go up against uh, Batman. Okay. I would have Black Manta for uh, yeah. to kind of uh, counteract with uh, uh, Aquaman. Um, I would have had Cheetah versus Wonder Woman because again, yeah. che- Cheetah was at one point part of the Suicide Squad. So what is that? Uh, three. Um, I would I would I would keep Boomerang. Just because there's some kind of like you know comedic thing to him, not maybe not this. I would have done a little bit better with. Uh, he brought by the kept rogues him. gallery um, mentality of we don't yeah, kill, yeah, we yeah, kill yeah, men, yeah. we don't kill women and children. Right, and then I feel like 
because for me, Harley Quinn never had a role in the Suicide Squad. I I have always seen it just as, you know what, you're here, just come along, and that's and that's why I always kind of saw it as like that's that's the joke of it is why we have a team of you know tra- not trained but you know deadly killers, and then you have the Joker's sidekick. No, I... so and I, and that so she would be my fifth member just because out of the the comedy of having her there along with um boomerang so that would be my five because again i still feel like the suicide squad should have been like not just task force x but amanda waller is like what would we do if the justice league can't be controlled well we have the suicide squad because this is really all we can get because there's no way amanda waller is going to stick a thing one of those brain blower up chips in dark side lex luthor brainiac or any really major villains in the dc universe and that's why, like, um, Black Manta, though I he's one of my favorites, he's, out of all of Aquaman's villains, he's probably the only one that could actually be caught by Amanda Waller and mm-hmm. given the brain thing. Yeah. Like, for Wonder Woman, can you imagine if Ares was part of the Suicide Squad because somehow Amanda Waller got the brain chip in him? Like, no, there's no way. No. So I, that's, how, that's also how you have to look at the Suicide Squad. I would have tried to get Bronze Tiger. Yeah. Just because, well, if I was going to have a Suicide Squad, it'd be the Harley Quinn who is very good at assassination. Yeah. Like you said, not the Joker's girlfriend, but like someone who actually brings skills to the table. That's the Harley Quinn I'd want. The one who is the gymnast, the one that is, you know, just active and, and, and dangerous. This, she carried a baseball bat. I know she does another one, but like. She was a, she was she was a gymnast in this um the movie too. Yeah, more of a contortionist. <laughs> but like potato you know. potato. Hmm. Okay. But no. Uh, I I don't want to. We've been ranting about this. Uh, I didn't want this episode to go long because you know it's Sunday or not Sunday. It's Saturday and we got things to do. Um, but I just wanted to bring to the attention of people that Suicide Squad is now an Oscar nominated film. Even though it is just for best makeup and hairstyling. Yeah, you, everyone really needs to kind of chill out on that. Because, again, it's not it's not about, you know, quality of the story. It's just, hey, you know what? This movie did pretty well on makeup. And guess what? They're, some of their costumes actually look cool for the movie. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, don't, don't read too much into it. I doubt we're going to see a commercial for Suicide Squad saying... Oscar, yeah, an Oscar, Oscar nominated, or even that on like the the Blu-ray cover, like Oscar nominated film. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see that. It's just, and honestly, these are the categories where you know, because look, until we get a quality film of like The Dark Knight again, I doubt we'll ever see a comic book movie nominated for an act like the the main Oscars. Yeah, and this is just how the this is how the Academy like includes us nerds by having visual effects and makeup yeah but rogue one made it for uh not best um was it best visual no Mm -hmm. this visual okay now are you sure i thought it was like soundtrack or compose i mean it it possibly could be let me uh it is best for sound mixing sound mixing i had two and visual effects Okay. It's oh, visual okay. effects and sound mixing. Okay. Yeah, but we're in there. And Avengers made it. Uh, Bat, uh, the Dark Knight made it. Uh, Wait, what? I'm just saying it in the past. Uh, the only film that was uh, was Heath Ledger's um, Joker. Joker. Everything else might have gotten like visual effects or something like that. Yeah, but other than that. They've been there. They've been there, but not in the acting, directing, best picture, or even writing. Yeah. Well... All right, folks, um, we're going to wrap up this episode. Episode uh, 42. Um, I haven't thought of a clever name for the episode yet. Let's just call it Suicide. You know, the Oscars Suicidal Mistake. Suicide Oscars. Suicide Oscars. Well, we'll think of something a little clever. More clever. Um, but Suicidal Oscar? Suicidal Oscar. That sounds really messed up. Never mind. Cut that out. Suicidal Tendencies? No, let's not let's not play with suicide. Just Wait, put the... just put Suicide Squad nominate for an Oscar. Let's <laughs> let's, let's not make this go straight to the point. Yeah, let's not make this any weirder than it has to be. Okay, um, well we're gonna wrap up this episode. Um, you can catch Addison here on his uh, podcast, the Real Film Geeks 
and you should be having an episode in the next couple of days, right? Yes, okay. yes. We uh, a lot of things have been happening in both of our lives that have been halting us, but we will be get, we'll be getting back to halting us. Yes, we'll be getting back to uh, on a regular basis of recording episodes. Okay, sounds good. And you can catch me on obviously Token Nerd. Uh, we will also we're on Instagram at Token underscore Nerd. Twitter, token underscore nerd, and Facebook, token nerd zero zero. We have a website, token nerd.com. Uh, we're actually under construction. We're trying to put that together and have all of our episodes available there, but it's already available on Facebook. Um, we're also available on iTunes and podbean.com. Um, you can find Travis, who is normally our co host on the podcast. He is at the UVD Weekly Wrap Up, and you can check out his website. Uh, UrbanViolentDaily.com and Urban Violent, at UrbanViolentDaily for Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So, folks, uh, thanks for joining us, and as always, stay spicy, my friends. Hey, everyone, this is Travis Likens from Token Nerd Podcast, and I'm here today to tell you something about sponsorship. That's right, Token Nerd now has a sponsor. The fine folks at TenaciousToys.com, your source for designer toys, pop vinyl, original art, and more, are now our sponsor. And guess what? As a part of that, you can get 10% off your next order at TenaciousToys.com by entering the code TOKEN10 at checkout. That's right, 10% off. And not only are they giving you this code, they're also going to be sponsoring many of our Token Nerd giveaways in the next coming months. So make sure to follow us at Token underscore Nerd on Instagram to catch our latest giveaways.